So one of my favorite types of videos to watch on YouTube are people's YouTube gear. I love seeing the different equipment that people have. And I am always so shocked how some people have incredibly elaborate setups, very expensive equipment, and then other people really have bare bones. So I thought it'd be fun to share all the different equipment that I use to film my YouTube videos. So that way you can see exactly what I do to get my YouTube videos to look and sound the way that they do. And you can apply it to your own YouTube channel. So if you want to take a peek at my YouTube gear, then keep on watching. So I have to start out talking about my number one piece of gear, and that is my camera. So you may not know that this is actually my second YouTube channel. And my first channel started back in 2013. And as a result, I have had a variety of cameras over the years. I feel like I was always upgrading every few years, getting new lenses. And I was very heavily invested into the Canon ecosystem, but I do not have Canon anymore. A few years ago, I made the switch to Sony. The camera that I use for YouTube is the Sony a6000. The Sony a6000 is a mirrorless camera. So as a result, it's much more compact than my Canons were. My Canons were very traditional DSLRs. I initially bought them for still photography. And then I really just didn't use the camera a lot for that. If I was going to go out with my family, I ended up taking the Sony a6000 because it was so compact. And even the kit lens is pretty great. It's a 16 to 50 millimeter zoom lens, which means that I can have very wide shots and then also tighter shots. It has pretty decent bokeh, which is the term for blurriness in the background. I definitely would like to upgrade to a lens that has much more bokeh. Um, and that really is going to be my next purchase. It's crazy because I had probably about three or four lenses on my Canon that would have been able to give me that effect. But I ultimately just sold all of my Canon gear because I was so all in with Sony and the video quality is just so, so impressive. But overall, I really love this camera. I think it has done a lot for me in the first year of my YouTube channel. Now, that being said, <laughs> I would not recommend this camera for YouTube. I know, I know you're like, what? But bear with me. So there are a few limitations that this camera has that just really makes the process for filming YouTube videos a lot longer than it needs to be. For example, the display, there is no way for you to tilt it or move it or turn it or pop it up so you can see yourself as you're recording. So that is very, very frustrating. You can pop it out a little bit and maneuver it, but it doesn't have the ability to come up or flip on the side like my Canon did. So as a result, I actually spend a ton of time having to hit record on my camera, sit in front, see if I'm in frame. Then I have to hit stop, go around, push play, look at the footage. If I'm out of frame or something, I have to make the adjustments. I have to go and do that whole process again. So it just adds a lot of time to my pre-filming phase where I'm not even recording the video yet. I'm just setting everything up. And if I just had the ability to have the screen pop up, easily within a second, I would know, oh, I actually need to lower my chair or I need to sit up straighter or I need to move the camera back. So that is no bueno, especially if you were to use this for vlogging, you would be holding your camera up and you would never know if you were in frame. So do not recommend. Now, another reason I do not recommend this camera, and this isn't necessarily a deal breaker, but it would be much more convenient. And again, I'm all about efficiency when it comes to recording my YouTube videos is that it doesn't have an audio input. So for my microphone right here, I can't plug that in directly to my camera and use this microphone as my microphone source. So I can only use the audio that the camera has, which is not great. So what I have to do for my audio, so that way I'm able to capture really great audio, because again, the audio on the camera is not that great. It's kind of echoey, it picks up a lot of things is I have to plug my microphone into my phone, record it as a voice memo, then airdrop the file to my computer. And then when I'm editing, I have to sync up the two files. Not a deal breaker, because ultimately I am able to get the audio, but at the same time, if I ever want to use my phone for anything, if I move my phone, the cord makes this huge on the recording, which is not great. And then I'm not able to do a screen record if I'm doing a demo on my phone at the same time as I'm recording something. So again, this is probably way too much info, but for that reason, I would recommend instead the Sony a6400, which is the newest model, which still has the pop-up screen and you're able to input your audio source. So if you are in the market for a YouTube camera, 
I am all about Sony. I think Sony has completely stepped up their game over the past few years and they are really a game changer when it comes to video and their cameras and just the quality of video they're able to produce. And in the next few months, I will definitely be selling my camera and upgrading to the Sony a6500. All right, so since I mentioned microphones a little bit, let's talk about microphones. So on my other channel, nearly all of the videos, I did not have a microphone and that was okay. I just used the microphone that was on the camera. However, looking back, at those videos, I'm like, wow, you really could have used a microphone. That would have helped. Your microphone is almost as important, if not more important than your camera, because you can just use your iPhone as your camera, which has incredible quality video. But if you have terrible audio, people are going to piece out of your video real fast. So that's why when I started this new YouTube channel, I really wanted to invest in a high quality microphone. And that is the very first purchase that I made very quickly after I started releasing a few videos. And I am just so happy with this purchase. So the microphone that I use is the Rode VideoMic Pro Plus. And I actually got the bundle that comes with a really nice stand. I love this mic. The sound quality is really, really great. It's super easy to use. You basically plug it in and as soon as it's plugged into the source, it's working. You don't even have to hit the on button. It just auto recognizes that's what you need to do. So it does have a rechargeable battery that it runs off of. And then you also recharge that using your computer. And honestly, I've been using this thing for eight months at this point and I've never charged it. I just charged it that one time because I'm only here not that often recording YouTube videos. And so I probably should charge it after this because I'd hate for it to die at one point, but it just has lasted such a long time. The cord itself is super long, so you don't ever have to worry about running out of cord or, or not being close enough. And the stand is really high quality and has just worked really, really great for me. I'm not really even an audio expert, so I really just plug it in and we go. And just using those bare basic settings, that is good enough for me. So if you have a nice camera and you're really looking for your next thing that you need to upgrade to, I would definitely suggest a nice mic. And Rode has a variety of microphones. Some are $100, some are a little cheaper. And this is the Video Mic Pro Plus. So there's a Video Mic Pro model. And I thought, you know what, if I'm going to invest, let's just go all the way and do this one time. And I'm very happy that I did. So my next gear relates with the microphone and it is this little adapter for my phone. So this is my microphone cord and it's the audio input, but my phone does not have one of those. So I have this little adapter right here. It has two different endpoints. One is for output like headphones and one is for input like a microphone. So I plug it into the microphone side. So this allows my phone to pick up the audio from the microphone. So I just use a voice memo and I record from there and it's pretty simple, but yes, I will include a link for that below. All right, so now let's talk lighting. Now, of course, if you are just starting out and I totally have done this, really all you need is natural daylight coming from a window and that is going to to give you beautiful lighting. But the problem is depending on where you live and especially how long it takes you to record YouTube videos, the daylight might be changing throughout your video. It's not going to be consistent. Clouds might come in and then completely ruin the shot and it'll be way darker. So for that reason, I don't love relying on natural daylight for my YouTube videos. I have three lights that I use to really pump in the light into my channels to really illuminate me. And it's, Again, I'm not a lighting expert. These are just things that I've kind of cobbled together and figured out and it works for me. So I have these two lights right here and I kind of put them at a 45 degree angle. So that way they're illuminating the sides of my face. And then I have a beauty ring, which is about four feet away. It's a foot behind the camera and that's illuminating my face. I found that if I get the beauty light too close to my face, it just washes me out. So I keep it back, but I like to be illuminated kind of on all sides. So I'm going to do something crazy and this is probably going to totally ruin the lighting of my video, which which one do I want to do? Um, so this is what these look like. They are just these kind of box lights and they are such a beast guys. I bought this in a pack of three um, and one of them broke. One of them had a really strong light and that was the one that I was, I used to use overhead to kind of illuminate from a top. It just was very cheaply made and so it broke. Um, but these two have still stood the test of time and they work for me. And they have this 
soft box right here so that way it can kind of diffuse the light so it's not such a harsh light on your face and they can kind of swivel around and they just plug in they have different settings you can do it like half power and then full power and for a beginning youtuber these are pretty great they come in a three pack and they'll give you really all the basic lighting that you would need to get started out. And then on top of that, it also comes with backdrops. So you have a green screen, a white backdrop, a black backdrop, and then a stand. So that way you can hang those up. So I don't, I've never even opened those because I don't use backdrops in any of my videos, but I know a lot of YouTubers do. So that's where you can really get a pretty good bang for your buck because not only are you getting your three point lighting system, but you're also able to get backdrops and a pretty good backdrop stand so that way you can do that as well. So that is the pros for these lights. They are a great bang for your buck. They're really cheap. They give you everything you would need to get really nice lighting for your videos. And the cons is that they are very cheaply made. I feel like they're gonna fall apart some days and they actually are very bulky. So they're just really big boxes and I don't have a ton of room in my closet. So I have to store them in the corner. You know, they can go very high and pretty low. So they do have that versatility. And overall, like I said, I've had these probably six years at this point and they've done great. So there you go. <laughs> All right, my next light is my beauty ring. And again, this is an Amazon purchase. It's probably one of the cheaper beauty lights that you can find there, but it really does a great job. It has a little dial where you can slowly turn up I guess the power or the intensity of the light. So I really love that. It has some different things that you can change out the panels around it. So if you wanted more of a yellow light, I like mine very uh, more of a white light. So I've never changed those out, but it also has a holder for your phone. So you can use it to just use your phone and take videos that way. So if you were just filming videos with your phone, you wouldn't even need a tripod because you can just plug your phone in right there. And it's, pre it's a pretty good um, phone holder. I've used it for a few things. And this light is much better quality than my other two lights. And so, yeah, I've been pretty impressed with it. I just recently started using the beauty light. Within the past year, it's because my other light broke. And so I needed something else to do this like frontal light. And I like it. I know there are fancier ones that would probably get even better lighting, but for me, uh, my basic lighting setup with my Amazon cheapies has worked pretty well. All right, next up is my tripod for my camera. Again, this is another Amazon cheapo purchase. It was probably one of the cheaper ones and that's fine because I'm not doing a lot of crazy movement with mine. I'm really just setting my camera up and I'm sitting in front of it and I'm talking, but really it has held up really, really well. It has a nice attachment so I can just screw in my camera and then I can just pop my camera in and out. It has basic functionality. I can make it pretty high, can make it pretty low. It has some little leveling things so I can see if the tripod is level or not. It has a little lever so I can lift it up and down. Really, it has served me very, very well. So no complaints, just it's nothing fancy. You know, it's it's really, I think it's under 50 bucks. So I will, of course, I will be linking everything that I'm talking about so you can check those out as well. All right, so that is my basic YouTube gear. And now I'm gonna talk about fun little things that I have that just make my life easier as I'm recording. And the first one is a power source for my camera. This is a game changer because this camera drains batteries really quickly. And I think I have about five or six batteries on hand, especially if I'm going on trips and I just have the batteries charged and ready to go. But one of the most annoying things, and I definitely experienced this with my Canon camera as well, is recording a video and then suddenly your camera dies. It's out of juice, the battery is dead. And then you're like, okay, no worries, I'll just put another battery in, but then you forgot to charge all of your batteries for some reason. So then you have to sit there and wait for the battery to charge, but charging batteries takes forever. So you were in the groove about making your YouTube video and now you're totally out of it. So after having that happen to me so many times, guys, like an embarrassing amount of times, that my camera died because it wasn't charged, I thought, you know what? There has to be a better way. And there is. So basically what this is, it's a power source for your camera. So it looks like a battery, but it has a cord connected to it that goes into the wall. And so it's a constant source of power. So my camera, ever since I've used this, has never run out of juice. It's basically always at 100% when I'm recording. And this is just such a game changer for me. And it was so cheap. Honestly, as soon as you buy your camera, buy one of these instead of buying like tons of extra batteries, which is what I did for a long time. And 
I rarely use those batteries now. Like maybe if I'm going on a trip and I need to take photos, then obviously I'll bring a whole bunch of extra batteries. But other than that, they just kind of hang out in that drawer. <laughs> All right, next up is this little remote for my camera. This is awesome. It's so cheap. And basically you sync it with your camera and it allows you to start and stop your videos. So before when I didn't have this, I would have to go around all of my lights and trip over things, hit stop, hit play, go back, hit stop, hit play. And it was just so cumbersome. But this, I just go boop and the camera starts recording and then boop and the camera stops recording. If you were doing still photos, you can take photos this way. It's like, oh guys, why didn't I think of this before? And this is a non-essential, I will just say that. But the fact that it's less than $20 and the convenience that it saves you is so worth it. But all of these little things really do add up when it comes to filming and editing. So the fact that I can just click of a button, start and stop recording or my battery pack, or that I could with the Sony a6500 that I could just plug my audio directly into the camera and capture it from there instead of having to waste 15 to 20 minutes trying to sync my audio and then I still don't sync it and people in the comments say, your audio's off. Yeah, I know, I tried. They just save you so much time. And so yes, it's like $20 here and $50 here, but it will save you a lot of time and make you more efficient at the end of the day. But again, not really essential. It's just up to you how many of those nice to have things you want in your YouTube gear. All right, next up is this card reader. I have had this probably 12 years. It's just an SD card reader. It plugs into a USB. I've had it forever and I haven't had the need to upgrade. So since I do have a MacBook Pro, which does not have USB ports, I have to plug it into this USB uh, adapter, which is the USB-C and I plug it in here and then I just plug that into my computer and it makes it super easy to transport all of my files directly to my computer. I know there's ones that are, are like this and they're fancier, you know, they, they have other ports in them as well. Here's the thing, in the links I will include my current camera gear and then I also will include the better option of my camera gear or the things, my wish list, because I know some of the things that I have are old and there's no reason to upgrade. But if I were starting from scratch, I'll include like, this is what I would buy if money wasn't an issue or whatever. So trust me, there's, there'll just be tons of links down at the bottom, but yeah. Next up is this Gorillapod. This is just a little tripod that I can use in a variety of situations. I love how bendy each of the legs are. So sometimes I'll vlog in my car and I'll park and I can just put this on my steering wheel with my camera and it holds it in place because it has all of these different arms that are super grippy and they make it really sturdy. I know people also use these as vlogging cameras. It gives you a little bit of a handle so you can kind of hold your camera out a little bit more. So they are really versatile. I actually bought the one that has the attachment for my phone. So if I ever wanted to use this as a phone tripod, I have that as well, but I unattach that because I can just screw this directly into my camera. So I love this. I just keep it in my drawer. Um, for when I need it, but it is really good. Now there is another tripod, which I would love to try. It's called the Switch Pod. A fellow entrepreneur named Pat Flynn actually created it. And it's definitely meant more of a vlogging holder, I guess you will. It's a tripod that's really meant for vlogging because this isn't, was, I don't think it was necessarily designed to be a vlogging device. And that one definitely is. So I'll include a link to the switch pod below. I have not tried it out, but um, that would be something if I needed to buy another one of these, I would definitely check out the switch pod and I'm interested. Okay, my last one is totally random, but I love it and I use it every single time that I record. These little cleaning wipes, these little towelettes, they're in individual packages and they are so convenient because I use these on so many things. I use them on my phone, I use them on my camera. I have a whole pack of these in my car because my phone gets dirty and I'm like, I can't handle this anymore and I need to clean it. So I have them there, but every day before I record, I'll just use this, I'll clean the front lens. And then I do have another little microfiber cloth that I use just to dry it. But I will just clean the lens to make sure that it's streak free, it's looking good. And then I will also use it on the back because there's a lot of makeup that gets on the back one sometimes from touching it. So yeah, I bought them in a pack of like a hundred plus. And initially when I bought them and there were, millions of them it seems like. I'm like, what have I done? But they have actually been amazing because I keep these all around the house. They're in my car, they're in my purse, they're in my little YouTube drawer. Everything is just all there and they really are so handy. 
All right, so there you have it. That is my YouTube gear. And to be honest, it's not that fancy. There are a few things here and there that are definitely worth the upgrade and I have upgraded, but my lighting situation, it's Amazon cheapo depot lighting. Uh, would I like to get rid of these behemoth of light boxes for much smaller compact ones? Yes. Do I need to? No. When they die, I will. I just wanted to show you that you don't necessarily have to have all of the best and greatest things. And I know, if, especially if you've watched YouTubers who have over a million subscribers and they have these crazy studios, you think, oh my gosh, no wonder they look so good. Or no wonder they have so many subscribers because they have great equipment. And that is not the case. Really, you can just start with your phone and a window and off you go and you can build your YouTube gear from there. And I, mine are pretty simple. I don't have that many things, but what I do have really does do the trick. And other than getting a new camera, just so I can have some of those other functionality, which I've talked about, I'm pretty happy with what I have. If you found this video helpful, be sure to give it a like and let me know in the comments below what YouTube gear you have. I'm always really curious to see what everyone else's setup is. So let me know. And of course, be sure to subscribe to Join the Tribe. I release new videos every Wednesday teaching you how to become a YouTube rock star. That is all that I have for you today. I'll see you next time.